Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mura here and in today's video we're gonna be talking about how you can rank up in Street Fighter V, talk about all of the different ranks from Rookie all the way to Grandmaster what you need to learn at each rank to have a smooth ranking up experience, hopefully as smooth as possible. I know that most of the times when lower level players get advice from the high level ones it can come across as some sort of condescending advice. They will tell you just learn how to anti-air and block. Congrats, now you're diamond. But it doesn't really work out that way, right? And I know that you guys deserve better. So I have looked at over 70 or 80 different match replays, all of the different regions, all of the different ranks to identify the problems that the player face at each one of them. And hopefully today I can provide you with tips. Think of it as a roadmap that you can use to know what exactly you need to work on at each of these different ranks. Obviously it can differ a little bit from one player to another, but I hope that this will at least give you a clear idea on the skill sets that you will need to acquire the title of a high level player. Let's start first with Rookie ranks and Rookie in my opinion is one of the hardest ranks in Street Fighter V believe it or not. The main issue with Rookie is that you will start off the game, you have no idea what you're doing or what anyone else is doing and you will play against bronze player. And at this point the bronze players will have a lot more experience than you do. So more likely than not you're gonna get squashed, right? And I've seen players at Rookie who have lost 14 or 15 matches before they had their first win and it can be completely disheartening. But when you start off the game, the most important thing to learn at first is at least on a basic level how to defend yourself, right? So learn that down back blocks everything when you see the opponent jump, hold back, learn how to uh, throw. Throwing is very important. Because at the early levels you might not know how to do your combos but throws usually do good damage and you need to learn the rock paper scissors of the attack, block and throw dynamic. And obviously the final tip is at least try to learn how to do your character moves on command. Obviously Rookie is very difficult but I think the majority of the active players eventually get from Rookie to Bronze and that is where the largest portion of the active player base is at. And Bronze is also a difficult rank because this is where you will need to learn the fundamentals of fighting games. right? Now Bronze can go two completely separate ways for you depending on how you decide to play and how you act in general. You might pick a character that will force all of the issue on the opponent. Like let's say for example you're playing Honda or Blanca. You can just do random Blanca ball all days and typically your opponent will not know how to deal with it. You will rank a little bit faster but then get stuck in silver or gold. On the other hand maybe you don't go that route, you try to play a little bit more the proper way and that is where you will have to learn for a little bit. When you enter the bronze rank, most of the players start their offense with jumps, right? They either jump backward and throw fireball or do random attacks, or they will jump forward and try to do a combo that they have learned, right? So it is the most important at this point that you learn how to anti-air. You see the opponent jump, you do your anti-air attack. If you don't know how your character is supposed to anti-air, feel free to ask. Don't ever feel discouraged to ask anyone. Look up, hit me up, hit anyone of the community. Most of the people will be willing to learn. So for example, if you're using Ken, you see someone jumping at you, you do down plus heavy bunch and you will get your anti-air. You don't even need to learn how to do DBs at this point, just basic anti-airs will suffice, right? 
So after we have gotten our anti-air down, now we need to get some damage on the board. So you need to learn a combo as well. Most of the players at bronze at least have a basic combo down. And if you don't know any combos, even if you are playing better than the opponent, the damage will be in their favor. They are hitting you for 20% and you are hitting them for 5. So you will have to work so much more if you don't at least know a basic combo. So then we have to learn a basic combo. After that, and I will be saying this a lot, learn to throw. Most people at bronze never throw, right? If you are doing a jumping heavy kick into a punch or a jumping heavy kick into a throw, this is honestly a 50-50 mix-up that can like completely get you past the bronze rank because most players at bronze just don't throw, right? So, or don't throw tick. So learn how to throw is vital. And finally, the second, the final thing, learn how to punish the Shotos. Ryu, Ken, Akuma. They are so popular in the bronze rank that you will need to know what you're doing against them. At least know their moves, what to do if Ryu does a YOLO Tatsu. You happen to block it, do the one basic combo you learn. They waved a DB, know the one basic combo you learn, learn how to punish them. Ken is doing heavy kick Tatsu. Okay, learn how you can stop it or punish it on block. That is essential at the bronze rank. If you know how to fight Shotos, you can get from the you can get out of the bronze rag before you know it. So hopefully you have managed to move past bronze and now you are in silver. Players at this level have their basics down a little bit more, so matches are not as easy. And when you have gotten to silver, there are a couple of things that you also need to work on to have smooth sailing in this rank. The first one, and it might come off as some sort of an obvious duh things to you, but learn your basic character archetype. For example, if you're playing Zangief, have at least an understanding that you need to play the grappling game. If you're playing Guile, you will need to play the zoning game. If you're playing Kami, you will need to play the rush down game. Previously, you can get through bronze by just basic uh, attack and defense basics, but in silver, you will have to start playing your character role, right? And obviously that can take a little bit of time because the opponents will be doing the same as well. So it might take you a little bit of time to adjust and understand what everyone is doing. But over time you will get the hang of it. Now one of the other things I noticed at Silver that most players are not doing is dashes. There are some characters who dash a lot like Bison and Ryu. But most of the others don't. And dashing is actually a very powerful tool. Especially, because I'm gonna say it once more, throwing is very vital at silver as well. So dash into throw is actually very effective, right? Dash throw or dash frame trap is very powerful. Most people are still used to just wait and anti-air. No one is ready for dashing, so dashing at silver is actually really powerful. Now you have already learned your combos by this point, right? You have at least your basic combos down. What you need to do at silver is learn your meaties, right? Once you have knocked down someone, know how to meaties them on wake up. This is very important because people wake up buttons all the time and obviously also learn how to use your frame trap because after they block, they will also tend to mash a lot. Meaties and frame traps are the two most important things that you will need to learn here besides just knowing your character roles. Now there is also one other final tip that I have noticed at Silver and that is if you don't know what your opponent is doing, if they are applying a sequence and have no idea where to interrupt or what they are doing, remember to V-reversal. No one ever V-reversal below gold. V-reversals are very good if you don't know what exactly you're dealing with. It can get you out of trouble. So if the opponent is applying their frame traps and you have no idea how to deal with it, V-reversal is a very good defensive option. So let's now talk about gold rank, right? The land of the flowchart. 
because something interesting I've noticed is that the quality of the neutral at gold is pretty much the same as platinum and low diamond to be honest most people at this point have an idea about how to play their character in the neutral their strengths and weaknesses, crush counters, all of that stuff, it doesn't really improve that much. The differences come in terms of their offense and their defense. Everyone in gold have their flow chart. They know pretty much how to do an offensive sequence. So it is vital that you do as well, right? If your character have a 50-50 option, learn how to use it, how to leverage it, know how your V-trigger activation combos, learn how to do your meaties proper, cover back rise because everyone back rises in gold. That sort of offensive pressure is very important at this level. Now there are three other things that are so important at gold. The first one, know how to deal with neutral skipping tools, right? This is so important. Attacks like M. Bison EX Devil Reverse, understand how you can anti-air it. Ken Heavy Kick Tatsu, Union EX Knee, Mika Charge Drop Kick. That type of attacks, you will need to lab how you can punish them and stopping them, right? Absolutely important at this level. Because you don't want the opponent to have easy access to running their flowchart on you, right? Now, once you have been able to learn how to deal with that, another thing is know how to deal with offensive uh, extension moves. So for example, Ken doing something into run v-skill, Laura doing something into her command dash v-skill, Ibuki into her command dash special. That type of move that usually will allow the opponent to extend their pressure sequence. Or Nash doing something into Monsult, or something into Monsult, or something into Monsult, or something into Monsult. Like, we already know that. Know how to anti-air that damn moonsault so you don't get stuck in that block sequence forever, right? This is vital at this point. And obviously, one other factor that I said was really important is learn how to throw again. Throwing is so important. But not only throws here, you also need to learn if your character have like a corner throw loop, how you can apply that. If your character have a meaty mid screen, how you can apply that. You have to start to be able to mount some sort of offense from your throws. Alrighty, so let's now talk about platinum and low diamond and I'm gonna bundle both of these two together because I honestly think they are pretty much the same. Low diamond is just an extension of platinum in a way. And the issues are mostly the same. Now there are two different types of players at this rank, right? First of all you have the crazy gimmicky flowchart guy. This is a player who have a flowchart or a gimmick that is pretty powerful. And their gimmick, pretty much and how strong it is, will determine the rank. If it is a good one, they can be like maybe even to super diamond. And if it's a wacky or weak gimmick, they can be just platinum, right? But the second they go up against someone who knows how to stop them, they are stopped in their tracks and they can't do anything. The others are players who are trying to play the game quote unquote the proper way, but they do lack optimization and they lack the knowledge in, uh, of dealing with the gimmicks, right? And there are a couple of things that you can do to be able to surpass this level. I think the first one, believe it or not, is anti-airs. And when I talk about anti-airs, I don't mean reaction anti-airs, I mean knowing how to position yourself so that you can anti-air, right? More often than not, when players play characters, let's like say for example Poison or Birdie or Mika, you can complain that, oh my, my crouching medium bunch doesn't hit cross-ups anymore, but you need to position yourself to prevent the opponent from crossing you up, right? Knowing where to space yourself so that, first of all, it is enticing for the opponent to jump and giving yourself a positioning that will allow you to anti-air is very big, right? So that is the first thing. The second thing is, at this point, you must, and I can't stress this enough, you must have good offense. You can't move past this point with weak offense. 
right? So you need to have your frame traps on point. You need to know how to start your offense proper. When you are trying to pressure someone, go for lights at first for the most time. Because if you go, for example, for a jab, then you can throw them. That's a tick throw. You can shimmy them. You can frame trap with another medium. Try to go for sequences that give you the most amount of turns, right? So learning how to pressure proper is very big. Most players at these ranks will auto pilot on defense as well. So learning how to shimmy is actually very big here, right? Everyone delay takes, right? Now, learning how to shimmy is important, but also once you are the one who is on defense, don't delay take all the time. Remember that you have other options. So challenge when you think the opponent is gonna shimmy. Remember to backdash, remember to jump, remember to V-shift. All of that is vital and obviously on offense, like I said, keep your offense strong, cover the V-shift options, cover the V-reversal options, pretty much have your offense on a lockdown, right? Now one of the other really important things that you will need here is to know how to optimize. Optimization is big at this point, right? Optimization in terms of if you got a combo, always go for the route that will give you OK right and then damage prioritize them if you have a combo that can give you good like 200 damage don't go for one that will give you 150 and the same -ish amount of okay right prioritize first okay and then damage and obviously the key here is to just learn the gimmicks it will it might take you some time to just learn the gimmicks but as long as you're solid as long as you have already known how to deal with the approach options position yourself to anti-air well your rock solid on defense you don't autopilot on it you shall be fine in all honesty you will find the smoothest of sailing up to maybe super diamond or above so let's now move over to the super diamond rank because this is a one that so many players actually struggle in. Uh, many players struggle at the Super Diamond are unable to proceed further or they will pretty much keep going up and down between Ultra and Super Diamond, right? Now, the thing about Super Diamond is it is this point where if you lose to a gimmicky Diamond player, you will actually uh, like come off at a point loss and you will fight the Masters and Grandmasters like more often and more often than not obviously they're gonna be more solid than you so it will be difficult matches it's it's a very difficult situation to be in it's like you're almost losing from every direction right and the key to survive in super diamond is honestly to focus on the three areas that i'm gonna tell you right now the first one is to make the most out of your v trigger right when you activate V-Trigger, make sure that you use your V-Trigger well and make sure that you activate in favorable situations, right? Don't throw away your V-Trigger activation. So for example, don't activate from something that won't give you pressure follow-ups or will not give you a good combo on hit or activate from situations where in the neutral, for example, it will give you an opportunity to punish. That sort of thing is very big at this point. The second aspect is don't be stubborn. I've seen so many players in Super Diamond lack the strategic thinking of how to handle a matchup, right? If you're fighting against a character, like let's say for example you're, you are Ryu, right? And you're fighting against Poison. Yes, maybe if you want to play your game plan, it will not work because this is not the character that you can force your game plan onto. And like if I'm a Grandmaster Poison and you are a Super Diamond Ryu, right? You're not you're not gonna out neutral me. Like I'm sorry, you're not gonna out neutral me. So sticking to that game plan is just a losing proposition. At this point, you'll have to understand that yeah, maybe against this guy I need to take risks. Maybe against this guy I need to play it safe. Learn to be flexible. Le the issue, honestly, the main issue with most Super Diamonds, they are hella. Um, I, will, I, I don't want to say stuck in their ways, but a lot of them are super hard-headed in how they play. They play just the one way and don't ever want to deviate from that. And that is very harmful in my opinion. You need to be flexible. The third aspect is obviously master the gimmicks. I mean, at this point, you will have decent experience. 
but obviously you can still get robbed by a gimmick here and there just make sure that you are thinking well on defense have already you know have an idea like what the opponent is trying to do and have a good handling of all of the lessons that we have learned up to this point And now let's talk about Ultra Diamond and Master, because these are the ranks where, congratulations, you're finally at the high level now, right? These ranks reward consistency more than anything. You can't lose once you've made it to this point, because pretty much losing to anyone, even a Grandmaster, will actually take a lot of points from you, right? So consistency needs to be the key. Now remember in Platinum when I said that your offense must be strong and if it is not you can't move past this point? Well Ultra Diamond is where your defense must be strong. If your defense isn't strong you can't move past this point because you need to be like I said consistent. So the key here is knowing how to defend proper, utilizing all of the defensive options, when to wake up buttons, when to block, when to V-reversal, when to V-shift, backdash, jump, you need to use all that sort of stuff to pretty much have solid defense. Obviously you can't guess right every time, but you can work on improving your defensive awareness. Another factor that is very important at this point is knowing how to play neutral. This means knowing how to poke properly, knowing how to whiff punish, and knowing how to stop dashing. Dashing is very important in Street Fighter V. Maybe you can get away with like predicting if the opponent is gonna dash, but at the Ultra Diamond, Master and above range, you must be able to react to that sort of stuff, you must train on reacting to that, and obviously whiff punishing is important. And obviously one of the other factors that gets to be really big is hit confirms. If you have hit confirms, that is a very big bonus at this level. Now, I've seen so many players at the Diamond, Super Diamond, maybe even Ultra Diamond and whatever. And they will say, um, um, you know what, I'm gonna switch to hitbox because my inputs... Uh, and it's like, dude, it have nothing to do with your inputs. Like, learn how to walk before you can run, right? Most of them, if, if you're stuck in these ranks, it means that there is an issue that you have to work on. It doesn't mean that it's your inputs or like you need a hitbox to move further. That's just ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, and it's sort of like sorry for the mini rant, but it's just something that I've noticed. And no, dude, it, it's not it's not the controller that is the issue at this point. But anyways, uh, yeah, at this point it pretty much comes down to refinement, optimization and having solid defense. And if you have all of that and then you are at the master, grandmaster level, it comes to matchups, knowing your matchup well and knowing what exactly you can and you can do against every character, how they can counter back you, etc. Being able to survive your character's hard matchups, all of that is very important. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment, it helps the channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon page and the Discord server page in the description below. There is also a Twitter page if you would like to follow me. My Twitter game is still kinda trash, but we are getting there. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.